Hi, my name is Mark from BizPro, NYB Enterprise Platinum Partners. In this video, we're going to take you through one of the features of NYB Advanced, the Cloud ERP. The feature we're going to focus on today is the purchase requisition and approval process. Purchase requisitions are an excellent feature for any sort of business where you have a large number of employees that may need to request stock or services from suppliers, but it needs to go through a formal requisition and approval process so that the stock can be ordered. Let's take an example. So let's say I'm working for a professional services firm and I often need to request, uh, say, travel or maybe some external goods and service to be purchased in for a project that I'm working on. Now, I might have, you know, 20 or 30 people who need these services, but there's really only two or three people in the organization that can actually go ahead and approve those purchases and make them happen. So that's where requests come in. The first step of the process is to create a request, which can then go through a formal approval process and then be converted into a purchase order down the track. I'm gonna walk you through that now. Let's start off by going to our distribution area and going to purchase requisitions. The step-by-step -step process are noted over here in my workflow on the left. We start off with the request, and then we can optionally put in bidding responses, which I'll show you as well, and then create a requisition, which is in effect the purchase order. It will be converted to a purchase order, which you'll see. So let's start off by going into requests and putting in a request for something that we need for a project that we might be working on. Now, first of all, we need to choose what type of request it is. We've got different classes that you can set up as needed. For example, it might be a customer request or it might be an employee internal request. To keep it simple, let's just make this an internal request. It's automatically requested by me because I'm logged in, but I could actually change that to someone else if I'm doing this on behalf of someone else. And I can specify what department it's for. Again, it's already defaulted because it knows where I belong due to my um, organizational structure setup that's been configured. I can put in a brief description here. So I need to order some travel for a project. And then I can go ahead and put in the items that I want to order. So I need some uh, travel here. So I might need some hotel and accommodation. Need uh, two nights and I estimate that the cost will be, you know, maybe $200 a night. Pop another item in here, and along with that, we'll also need some car rental. And again, I'll need two days of that, and I don't know, it might be $100 a day. So if I want to put in some further information, I might pop a note in here and say, you know, please, I only stay at five, star or better, doesn't hurt to ask, and any other notes that I want to, and all those notes will flow through uh, to the, re the other screens as you'll see moving forward. Now, the next um, step here is to actually go ahead and take that off hold, but before I go further, I'll just point out another area here is this budget details. If you've got general ledger budgets in the system, this will actually check the request against the budget that we have in the system for the month or year to date and flag up a warning if we're going over budget. Now, this doesn't need to be made visible to the uh, end users, but it is really useful for the approvers to see that and see whether we can actually authorize this request or not. Now, I'll come back to the main details here. You'll notice that this has already been marked as approved. Now, to make this a bit quicker, I've logged myself into the system as administrator, but depending on our processes here, this could go in as a waiting approval, and then an appropriate approver would need to come in and actually approve this request before it can go any further, so maybe a project manager. And then all the approval details would be shown here as far as who's approved it, when, etc. Brilliant, let's go to the next step now and put in the actual requisition. So when this, when this request has been put through and approved, we can have this send an email to an appropriate person internally so that they know that they now need to go ahead and confirm the next step, which is to possibly get quotes and then turn that into an actual purchase order. The step there would be to go into requisitions and go ahead and add requested items. Now this could be from one employee 
Or if you're going to do some consolidation, we can bring through multiple requests from all different employees for all different things, but consolidate them if, for example, we're going to request them all from the one supplier. So here's my two lines from earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. And we're going to get some quotes for this from our um, travel consultant. So the next step here is to go into vendor um, info and check whether a request has come through from the employees of a specific vendor. Hasn't in this case, so what we can do is go ahead and go to bidding and put in our own vendors that we want to uh, get quotes from. I'll just go ahead and pick one in this case just to make it simple. So at this point we can go ahead and request quotes. So using our vendor notification we can go ahead and send requests and this would send effectively a quote request to our suppliers to quote on the goods or services being requested. Now to make it quicker I'm going to um, skip that step and I'm going to go ahead and choose this vendor straight away and you'll see it's populated them as the actual vendor. But just so that you know you can actually record their quotes into the system if you've got multiple suppliers and we've got a file management system so you can actually record the physical quotes in the system so we've got full visibility of everything there. Now once we've done that and we've assigned it to an actual vendor, the final step would be to actually go ahead and create the purchase order. It's giving me a warning that I haven't filled in all fields so if I go back and check what that is, it's told me that I haven't specified which location I want to allocate that to. Now these could all be defaulted etc but um, it, it's a good warning because you don't want to order something to go nowhere. So I'll go ahead and create the orders. And there we go, all done. So that's now created an actual purchase order that's in the finance system, ready to go, and all my notes have flown through. Uh, so that can now um, be sent off to the supplier as an actual purchase order. Now, if your um, process requires that purchase orders also need to go through an approval process, so let's say someone in the purchasing department has actually uh, gotten all the quotes, put the bidding responses in, selected who they want to use, but it's gone over their authorization limit, that would still take effect and this may need to be escalated to a manager. And all of those rules can be defined in what we call approval and assignment maps. I'll show you an example of that that I've got in my favourites here. This is an assignment map that's been created for requests. So in this example, we've got two different approvers. We've got the main approver that can, if we have a look down here, can approve it if the estimated cost is greater than $1,000 or a sub-approver that can approve anything that's less than 1000 Based on these rules, the system will automatically route the approval through to the appropriate person or department to approve it. And that can limit the number of emails for approval being sent to maybe people higher up in the organisation that don't need to worry about some of the smaller claims. Well, that brings us to the end of the video. Hopefully you found that informative and thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more interesting updates in the future. Thanks. Have a great day.